welcome to Confused Reviews, where cartoon drawing reviews movies, and one of my favorite childhood channels was Nickelodeon. From the well-animated cartoons like Ren and Stimpy, Rugrats, and the early episodes of Spongebob, to the long-running sitcoms like Drake and Josh, Ned's Declassified, and Zoe 101. But I was never into the show all that. Now you can go and say I'm not a true Nickelodeon fan or whatever, but I, even as a kid, watched shows like Saturday Night Live and In Living Color instead. But somehow, they were given $9 million to make a film based around a three-minute sketch, known obviously as Good Burger. It tells the story of Ed, a simple man who enjoys working at a fast food place more than anyone I've ever seen, as well as Dexter, a high school student who desperately needs a summer job, because the script needs these two to intersect somehow. But who knows, maybe the producer saw some major potential with this idea. Okay, let's, let's be honest, they, they didn't but maybe I'll get a good laugh out of it, and it'll be a guilty pleasure. Let's just jump into this movie and see if it's worth a trip to Good Burger, or we should burn the burger joint to the ground. This is Good Burger. So the film begins with the only line anyone remembers from this movie. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? <laughs> then, um, Ed, played by Cal Mitchell, starts tripping balls and imagines him floating around some Good Burgers. He then wakes up from that CGI mess and says, Welcome to Good Burger again. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, can I say? We also see that Ed is stranger than most because he showers with his work clothes on. Man, I'm only two minutes in and I'm super confused. And well, that's kind of my thing. Shit. Some construction worker is trying to order, but for some reason, none of the other workers know how to do Ed's job, which is taking orders. Weird. Ed is then rollerblading to work when he drags a girl by her jump rope, steals a baby, mixes it up with a basketball, and makes it to work. Jeez, this movie is weird. Oh, and of course, he says welcome to Good Burger another time. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? You need to shut the fuck up! Ed, being the idiot he is, drives the customer away, and we find out that there is a soon-to-be competition. Mondo Burger. We also meet most of the employees, Mr. Bailey, played by Dan Schneider, Monique, played by Char Jackson, and Otis, played by the late, great Abe Fagoda. We then head to the high school and meet Mr. Wheat, played by... Sinbad. Who's been in such masterpieces as Jingle All the Way, First Kid, and Homeward Bound 2. I'm sure he'll give an Oscar-worthy performance. We also meet Dexter, played by Keenan Thompson, who is quick to leave school for summer vacation. With Sinbad as my teacher, I'd get out of there as quick as I could, too. Dexter is speeding down the street in his mom's car and swerves out of the way to avoid hitting Ed and ends up hitting none other than Sinbad. Of course. Turns out it's going to cost $1,900 to fix the car, so Dexter has to get a summer job. He starts off at Mondo Burger and he... he sucks. We also meet the villain of our movie, Kurt, played by Jan Sweeterman. He looks like Neil Patrick Harris and Francis from Malcolm in the Middle had a love child. The resemblance is uncanny. Kurt then gives a speech on par if Ronald McDonald became a communist. Dexter also gets fired. Whatever. Ed then drives away another customer. It's a mystery how this place is still in business. And he gives Dexter another milkshake. Hey Dexter, maybe if you're crunched for cash, buying 15 milkshakes at roughly $3 a pop isn't helping your debt. After an... Well, you been by a sheep? Unusual conversation, Ed begs for his boss to give Dexter a job, and since his name is on the poster, he's obviously given the job. He also says this talking about Abe Fagoda. Yeah, but look at him. How much longer could he possibly live? 19 years. Asshole. Dexter hits on Monique, which is weird because her and Ed look alike. He also says that she's all that. Get it? Hilarious. The two idiots then make their delivery in... the burger mobile. Now I see where Spongebob got it from. Later that evening, Kurt and his two goons enter Good Burger just to be a dick. We then see the Mondo Burger opening, and it's the most extravagant opening to any restaurant ever. Like, what is it that caused so many people to come here? Did the ad say, anyone who comes to the premiere gets a free hooker? After a montage showing an average day at both restaurants, we see Ed run into Otis, and Dexter realizes that it was Ed that caused him to crash. Otis then says this golden line. You think you can get me to a hospital? I think I broke my ass. Man, this is just sad. After a nauseating lunch scene, Ed shows off his special sauce, which looks like Mac sauce and the Nickelodeon logo were thrown into a blender. Turns out, to my disbelief, it's actually good and helps Good Burger get back on track. Dexter then tricks Ed into giving him 80% of the earnings he gets from the sauce, which is a colossal dick move. After that, Ed and Dexter sit on the roof and talk. Dexter tells him about how his dad left him. Whoa, is this movie actually trying to make me feel bad for this character? 
huh, maybe I'd feel bad for him if he wasn't stealing a bunch of money from Ed and he's been being a dick this whole movie. The next day, they make a delivery like the Blues Brothers would and deliver the food to none other than Shaq, who must be cheap to get because he's been in things like this, this, and this. After that cameo, Kurt demands they make the burgers bigger, so three times the size of a good burger. Jeez. Kurt gives Ed a lift and tries to convince him to work at Mondo Burger, and obviously, Ed is as useless as a bodybuilder with no arms. Kurt sends in Roxanne, played by Cameron Electra, to get the sauce out of Ed, which is the grossest sentence I've ever said on the show. Ed, Dexter, Roxanne, and Monique go out on a date, and it goes horrible, at least for Roxanne, who gets seriously messed up. After that romantic disaster, Monique finds Dexter's contract with Ed, and she rips him a new one. Good. Dexter tries to talk to Ed about the contract, but instead they find out that the stray dog won't eat a Mondo burger, but will eat a good burger. Hmm, maybe there's something wrong with Mondo burgers. You know, that actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, with this guy running the place, I could see it. He's practically a fun-sized Bond villain. They decide to infiltrate Mondo Burger dressed like this. Um, they decide to cross-dress. Oh, and, uh, this happens. Water! Water! I need water! 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 Oh! They find out that they're dropping some mysterious chemical on the patties that makes them come out three times their original size. They're soon intercepted by Kurt, who throws them in the loony bin. Ed then has an intimate conversation with Heather, played by Linda Cardellini. Awesome. Kurt and his goons break into Good Burger and poison the sauce. Otis catches them and they throw him into the asylum too. Then Ed turns on some music and all the patients break out into a dance number and they escape. Well, that was stupid. They then jump out of a window, including a 77-year-old man, which is only amazing for his body and well-being, I assume. And to escape the doctors, they steal an ice cream truck and rush back to Good Burger, after Ed tackles an old lady. Awesome. They head to Mondo Burger to get some proof of them tampering with the meat. They eventually make it into the building. Well, after falling headfirst in, <laughs> Dexter barges into the kitchen and threatens them with ketchup and mustard? How is that intimidating? Hasta la vista, baby. Ed eventually finds the chemical and pours a crazy amount in the meat. Dexter and Ed are caught on the roof and Kurt is given an empty bottle. Thanks, hose. Wait, did he just say... Thanks, hose. Did he just say, thanks, hose? Thanks, hose. Weird. The burgers then go from looking like a cow turd to something like a small boulder. Gross. The burgers then explode. Cool, but still gross. The whole building begins to crumble and Sinbad's car gets crushed by the burger on the building. So I guess Dexter has no more debt? Kurt is then taken to prison, giving the face of a dog who got caught peeing on the living room rug. Oh, and Dexter rips up the contract. Good, Ed deserves that money. And of course, Good Burger is saved, and our tale comes to a close with our overused line. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? And that was Good Burger, and it was alright. Now, it's not as good as the Rugrats movie or even the first Spongebob movie, but it's fine for kids, and I'll even admit I liked it as a kid. It's got a few fun moments, and I even chuckled a few times, but the premise is predictable and rather boring. And for an almost two-hour movie, I only laughed enough for maybe a three-minute sketch, which this movie is based on. So that leaves almost an hour and 40 minutes of me just sitting there. Keenan and Kel are fine in this movie, even though they don't have much to do or say other than Dexter mumbling bullshit and Kel saying wacky and random things. The guy who played Kurt was good enough as a kid's film villain, but his motives are kind of weird. Why doesn't he just wait until Good Burger runs out of business? Or better yet, just have two restaurants. McDonald's and Arby's coexist and you don't see Ronald McDonald poisoning roast beef sandwiches. If he would have just waited, I'm sure he would have won the franchise wars because they seem to be doing great business-wise and Good Burger was on the decline. Overall, this movie is fine for kids and fans of older Nickelodeon, but for me, it's a movie I doubt I'll ever watch again. I'm going to give Good Burger a C-. It's fine for what it is, but looking at it critically, it's obviously not good. I'd recommend it for those two demographics, but other than that, I'd skip it. I'm Confused Reviews, thanks for watching. Thank you.